Good morning, Bear Creek. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so very much for that warm welcome. I love you guys so very much. I don't do good with applauses, though. Welcome to Bear Creek. It's the uh, second Sunday of Advent, and I'm so very excited about being back. Look at what God has done in our lives in these last three months. I pray that all of us have been drawn closer and closer to our God, to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you've had a, just a great experience of knowing that God is real and that Jesus wants to do great things in your life. I hope you feel as good as I do today. I'm trying to make myself not get too excited about being back and just ease into this. Our Savior, our Savior gave us a hope during this Advent, the very first Advent. And so for every Advent since, we have been celebrating and looking for more of what Christ has for us. And I believe that Christ has something in store for you in this Advent that you've never experienced before. I'm going to ask the Andreessen family to come, and they are going to get us started today on this, the second Sunday of Advent. Will you stand with us, please? Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make an effort to preserve the unity of the spirit with the peace that ties you together. You are one body and one spirit, just as God also called you in one hope. Handle to signify our hope for the Prince of Peace, whose birth we await in this Advent season, who brings us peace not as the world gives, but true peace that passes all understanding. Lord God, we look to you to bring us true peace in a world where peace seems far away. We hear your call to us to be peacemakers within ourselves and in the world around us, but we know we cannot find peace apart from your grace. Prince of Peace, we wait for you. Come, Lord Jesus, be born in our midst. Grant us peace in our hearts and lives. Amen. Good morning, Bear Creek. Our opening hymn is hymn 238, Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains.
Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so very much. Give God a praise if you don't mind. I, I just appreciate all this beautiful music. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, choir. Good to see our choir. I am so excited. Looking forward to next Sunday. These guys, I tell you, it's going to be great. Welcome again to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. And this is a safe, inclusive that's seeking and growing in Christ's love. I love who we are. I love who we're becoming. I want us to continue to grow and also know that the love that we're talking about is extending ourselves. Have you been doing that? Extending yourself for the nurturing of someone else's as well as your own spiritual growth. That's what this is all about. So we're so glad that you are with us today. Please register your attendance. If you did not register your attendance, we want to know that you are here and get to know you. If you are a guest and this is your first time, my name is Pastor Leo Tyler. If you don't know me, I had been out for three months on sabbatical, and I am back and looking forward to uh, just catching up on everything. Got some good hugs on Thursday when I came up to the school. Missed my baby so much and had a chance to see all those guys. And another thing I was going on, of course, these guys were working, so I came on campus and I saw that this is what, it, show what it used to look like. This is what it looked like when I left. This is on the, on the uh, west side, on the east side over here, and you'll see these stairs whenever you go back to the worship center and then look and look at what it looks like now. These guys redid all of this. I mean, they made sure all the rust was gone. They, they, they repaired everything. They painted. So I want to say a big thank you to Gordon, to Al, to Larry, to Brian, and also Rex, who was not there when I took the picture. Can you give those guys a big thank you? That was my surprise for when I got back. I mean, they saved us, I mean, hundreds of, well, ten, tens of thousands of dollars by doing that. So I really do thank them for that. Uh, please, I want to stay in contact with what's going on with you as well. Remember my number, 832-773-4901. Let's make sure we know what's going on. And there's a lot of stuff happening, of course. Uh, I want to update you. I thank God, first of all, for David, Pastor David. Did you guys enjoy Pastor David? Yes? Not too much, not too much. Um, but now, I, I appreciate him so very much. I, I thank God for Pastor David. I thank God for the conference and uh, allowing us to, uh, these three months sabbatical. Lupe and I really enjoyed it. It was good for us. Uh, we, did, we did complete our writing of the book. There's the formatting and some things going on, so uh, we won't have it on Amazon until in January, but keep looking for uninterrupted love is what it's called uh, in every season of life. And so that was great to complete that. Also, I am now a professional coach. I, I told the uh, SPRC that I, I was offered by the conference to take a coaching class, uh, 40, well, 60 hours of coaching uh, uh, class during that time, and so I complete that on this coming Tuesday, and then I'll be a professional coach. So I'm looking forward to bringing the coaching approach to Bear Creek as well. It's a great opportunity for us to grow and, and just uh, really accomplish some things that I believe that we, we can do in the future. We do have as I said, next Sunday. We have our cantata. We want everybody to come. We'll have one, one service. Am I right, Where's Sean? One service on next Sunday. So one service, 10 o'clock, it's going to be the cantata, and they have been really working hard. It's called Everlasting Light. It's going to be an exciting time for us, so invite your friends and, and those individuals that maybe haven't been here for a while. I mean, invite them. This is a good time for us to come together and, and your friends that you had maybe not invited to church. Invite them to something special on next Sunday. It's going to be a great time. 10 o'clock on next Sunday and here in the sanctuary. The last thing is on tomorrow is our charge conference, inviting everybody to come to our charge conference uh, to get some information because you do understand we had a big weekend in the United Methodist Church on yesterday. On yesterday, we did have a lot, and, and I say in the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, a lot of churches disaffiliated. We did not. We stayed along with 54% of the churches, but that does mean it was a lot of pain. A lot of pain because 46% of my buddies <laughs> uh, are no longer part of the United Methodist Church. And that was tough, and it is going to be tough for a while. 
I want you to understand the effects of it. Uh, the superintendent will be here at 7 o'clock on tomorrow night for our charge conference. He'll be addressing those uh, issues as well. Please come find out if you have any questions. He'll be ready to answer that as well as we move forward on what we look like as a Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. God is good, amen? No matter what we go through, we know that God is our light. Will you stand, please? Look around. See who you haven't seen in a while. Maybe you want to get a hug. Maybe you want to cross the aisles and welcome somebody. Say a name. Say a name. Make sure you know their names, okay? Let me turn this off. Please be seated. It's prayer time, Bear Creek, and I can stand here today and stand here because the sun's not shining in my eyes. <laughs> so I'll stand here. As we come together this week in this place, as God calls us into his presence, we once again remind ourselves of all of our congregation that is in our need, that we need to pray for. Um, this past week, Ben Gray passed. His service will be two Saturdays on the 17th of December. So if you'll recall, five months ago, we had a service for his wife, Mary. So uh, keep the Grays in your family, Dave and Kathy and all of the grandkids, because it is a tough, tough time for them. Uh, also keep in mind several of our congregation are just out of the hospital um, Susie Morales is doing well she had surgery this week but she is doing well I talked to her uh, Thursday she's excited that it's going so well and hope to be back soon uh, and then we have several other members that are home recovering so keep them in your prayers and as always when we come on these days to prayer time, we also have praises. So I, I invite uh, Bob Judge and Jennifer Way here to uh, offer us a praise. Good morning. I think everybody can feel all of the love and the excitement in the air today, and it is all because of you. And we are so excited, so excited that you are back with us, and we've been praying for you and sending you and Loopy, and Loopy, we're so excited. You were the first one that I saw this morning, and I was like, yay! And we just hope Pastor Leo, that your sabbatical was everything that you needed and wanted it to be, and that you have that recharge, refresh, and renewing in uh, every aspect of your life. And welcome home. Thank welcome you. Home. Yeah.
So let us join together in prayer. Oh, gracious and loving God, we come here today because you've opened the doors to this place. And you call us into your presence. And as we walk into this place, we feel you around us. And as we come here today, we come here, Lord, with many, many prayers. Prayers that you've seen on our heart and heard us whisper, and prayers that we know that you will answer. But once again, Lord, we'll come to you and ask, be with each and every one of us and everyone in this congregation who is hurting. Whether that be physical, whether that be financial, whether that be spiritual, we know that in this body, in this place, that your grace is poured out upon each and every one of us and that that grace flows from us to everyone around us. And so, Lord, we ask you to fill our hearts so that we will open our arms and comfort those around us. Be with those who've struggled through this whole concern about your church. And, Lord, we ask that you watch over your church for each and every one of us are the hands and feet of that body and we need your guidance on a daily basis to do your work here. But this day, Lord, we give thanks and praise that you have brought us back, Pastor Leo, that you have renewed him, that you have strengthened him, that you have even enlarged his heart so that he can lead us into the future of this church we pray all of this in the name of your son Jesus Christ Amen Thank you, stay right there if you don't mind Pastor Ron, Reverend Ron I, I thank God because I, I, I told you that whenever I left uh, for the sabbatical, there's no way I was going to be able to do this without Pastor Ron and I'm so very happy I asked Pastor David just to show up on Sunday morning, he didn't have to worry about anything because we have a great, great uh, pastoral staff yes all the leadership, all the staff, you did an awesome, awesome job. I want you to know that, and that's the report I got back from uh, Pastor Dave as well. So thank you so very much. I love you. I would I kiss you, you, but, you know, no. okay. All right. He's just not that guy, you know. <laughs> love you so very much. Somebody might get jealous. Lupus said somebody might get jealous. You got to watch. Michael kissed me whenever I came in the door. I just want you to know that, so. Oh my God, I love this woman. You know, she was at the place where she goes, okay, I had to, I mean, not had to, wanted to come back to work, December 1. So whenever I, I left the house on December 1, uh, she was still like, oh my God, I have to make this adjustment now because she is so spoiled. Just what, I want y'all to know that. That's what you did over these three months. You allowed her to get even more spoiled, okay? So I love my baby though. It's been a great time. Did you want to say something to him uh, or anything about the sabbatical? Just thank you so very much. Um, here, let me grab this. Okay, I'll get it. See, that's the thing that happens, too. <laughs> you kind of lose control over three months. I just wanted to say thank you so very much. Um, we have never had... Oh. We've never had the time to where there was absolutely just us and no interruptions and no midnight calls so that he can get rest. So um, it sounds almost impossible, but I believe I have a better husband and y'all will have a better pastor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. You put that down, it's December 4th, she said it. You heard that. She had a birthday on yesterday. You guys mind?
you guys so very much. Thank you. We love you. We, we love you. You may be seated. We're celebrating today, of course. Uh, Jonathan Sampson uh, was not able to be here, but Jasmine is taking, uh, doing a great job there with the cameras. But he, he wasn't able to be here because he was kind of busy with his wife this morning. They were in the hospital and... <laughs> woo! He just wanted to wait for me to come back. I don't understand that, but isn't this neat? This is... Uh, Kinsey Rain, and this is the newborn babe of Jonathan and Alina Sampson. Give them a just a whoo! Thank you, Jesus. We got a new baby here at Bear Creek, and I tell you what, this is the other thing I did during the sabbatical. I kind of was hanging with these guys. That's my boys. That's my two grandsons. You can see Zareth, how big he's gotten. He's four years old now. And you see the youngest one. He has my curly hair. You see that, 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 that red? I always say that. that. That always gets me because he has red hair. Mine started red, and it, you see where it is now. Uh, but that's Gabriel, and he'll be two at the end of this month. As you prepare your hearts for giving today, I want you to think about what you are celebrating. What are you grateful for? You've been a great church in giving while I was not here, and I appreciate that so very much. But notice, I came back in December. December is one of those months where all at once you look at it and you go, okay, we didn't meet the goal here, so we got to do some catch-up. I came in on the Sunday where I have to tell you that. We have to do some catch-up. We have to make this month the best month ever. Our goal is to go for $200,000 $200, this month. Now, you might say that it's impossible, but it's not. I've seen you do it before. But we're going to have to work hard. I just want you to do your best. Do your best, and let's make it happen. And let's finish this year knowing that, you know what? We are going to continue to do God's ministry here at Bear Creek, and God is going to bless us. Are you with me? Let's do our best, and let's go for that number, okay? We'll let you know on a weekly basis where we are. We don't have too many weeks to do it, but I know we can. Let's pray and ask God to lead us and guide us, and to open our hearts as well as our pocketbooks. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you. We know you are a God of more than enough. And I praise you, Lord, and thank you for this great congregation. Thank you for what you have done with us, through us, and the dream and, and the vision that you have for us, God, that we will fulfill it because of you. We love you. We love you with all of our heart. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for who we are. Bless these gifts that we're about to receive today. Whether you're giving online or giving in the offering plate or however you give, give knowing that God sees and God blesses. God is the one that gives as we give back to God. God continues to give to us as well. We can't beat God in giving, no matter how much we try. Thank you for all the blessings in our lives, God, for family and friends, for the love and joy that we feel, for the peace that we have. Thank you, Father, we pray in your son Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so smile as you give today.
Our scripture today comes from Luke 1, 76 through 79. And you, little one, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you shall go on before the face of the Lord to make ready his ways, to bring and give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness and remission of their sins. Because of and through the heart of tender mercy and loving kindness of our God, a light from on high will dawn upon us and visit us to shine upon and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct and guide our feet in a straight line into the way of peace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it so very much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you, Zach, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, nice meeting you, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey on, on piano as well. Great job, guys. Our focus this Advent is the everlasting light. The Chance Choir, of course, on next Sunday will explain more and emphasize the significance of the light of Christ that has come are you excited about it? Are you excited about what God is doing in this season? I look so forward to next Sunday. I missed the choir. I'm looking forward, and Zach, I missed that great singing. Light is, of course, synonymous with the Advent and Christmas seasons. Look around us. Love the lighting. I want to say thank you to uh, Wes and his crew as well. I think it was... Uh, uh, well, it's a number of you guys. I don't want to miss anybody, but I know you guys sent me some pictures, and we'll 
say thank you. I think it was in the newsletter as well, but I appreciate you guys so very much. Everywhere we look, our homes, our businesses, all around us, decorated with lights. So why are lights so important to this season that we call Advent? And, and what does the light have to do with Christmas as we celebrate our Savior's birth? Have you ever thought about even the need for an everlasting light? A light that continues to shine indefinitely. A light that stimulates sight so that you and I are able to see. A light that makes things visible that were invisible. The light of God provides each and every one of us the ability to see what our natural intelligence can't see. Therefore, God is a supernatural light, giving us supernatural vision. Luke describes the birth of Jesus' forerunner, John the Baptist, in this text. Of course, his mother is Elizabeth, cousin to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And here is John's father, Zechariah. And Zechariah has received the ability to speak after nine months of silence because of his unbelief. You can read Luke chapter 1 when you get the opportunity, read the entire story. But at verse 67 in Luke chapter 1, Zechariah here begins to prophesy after the birth of his son. He began to say, quote, you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. You will tell his people how to be saved through the forgiveness of sins because of our God's, get this, our God's deep compassion. The dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us on a path of peace. John speaks of darkness in this passage, and of course, it is very difficult to talk about light without talking about darkness or mentioning darkness. What if all the lights went out on a dark night? It reminds me of growing up, of course, in the woods of Allen Parish in Louisiana, where there were no street lights. <laughs> You could, not, you could even see your hand in front of your face on a, on a dark night if the moon was not shining bright. There are those, my brothers and sisters, that are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death. The scripture says this, then we contemplate on what if we were in darkness. How would you define even darkness? your darkness first of all you would probably say pastor I can't see <laughs> it's too dark to see next maybe possibly experiencing the fear of the unknown or the unpredictable and then maybe the darkness to you is not understanding not comprehending it's dark, I don't get it. What is it that you can't see that you wish you could see right now? In those times, darkness often meant evil, as in the power of darkness or the dark side. This darkness meant the horror and the stench of sin. And there were those in the shadow of death, which meant they were trapped in sin and destined only for death and destruction. This was darkness in the world in which John the Baptist and also Jesus was about to enter. Augustine in his uh, book, City of God, he gives a description of this time using the sources that he had, and he writes this, quote, Let them recall with us, therefore, the many and diverse calamities by which the Roman commonwealth was consumed before Christ 
had come in the flesh. And then he lists, listen to these things. He lists famine, he lists disease, he lists war, looting, captivity, slaughter. And there were 400 years of this, 400 years that we call often the 400 years of silence, when there was no word from heaven. Nothing since the last prophet spoke in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, until the birth of Jesus. And during those years, the people of God are struggling. They had suffered under the Persians, under the Greeks, and now under the Romans. And Augustine said this, he reports, quote, for at various times and in different places before the advent of our Redeemer, the human race was consumed by innumerable and not a few cases, incredible disasters. If I had not told you that this was a quote from Augustine, you probably would have thought that I was reading from the Daily News. Describing our time. Because the situation is clear. It was a dark time. It is a dark time. Darkness was not only the absence of light, but also the absence of the knowledge of God. It was the knowledge of oneself, the absence of the knowledge of oneself, the absence of the knowledge of another. No one had time to get to know anyone darkness was also the absence of good an absence of peace it was a time without light which meant there was an absence of life but there is some good news as at the advent of Christ over 2,000 years ago there's some good news today for our darkness Luke emphasizes in the prophecy of Zechariah in the last two verses of the text you'll read because of our God's deep compassion the dawn from heaven will break upon us to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide us to the path of peace let's list these and take a look at what God is saying to us first of all God's deep compassion let's work through that Zechariah begins with these deep feelings of God deep feelings of God's loving mercy God's tenderness God's loving kindness not wanting us as a human race to remain in darkness Jesus says in the Gospel of John, for I have come into the world as a light, as a light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. God does not want any of us to remain in our darkness, no matter what your darkness is today. It's not where God wants you to remain. God loves you so very much wants to give you and me a way out of our darkness. Will you allow God to take you, lead you out of your darkness? Secondly, the light from heaven has come. Eugene Peterson paraphrases in the Message Bible. He says this. He gives us this beautiful language. Through the heartfelt mercies, he says, of God, God's sunrise will break upon us. God is saying to us, it won't always be midnight. No matter what you're going through, it won't always be this way. I've witnessed some beautiful sunrises over these last three months. Beautiful sunrises where it was completely dark and all at once, the light just breaks in. So beautiful. Some translators read that this is the risen sun. The actual sun will visit us. What are you doing as God gives us a new way and a new day? This day that God has given you. What are you going to do with this new day and this new opportunity that God gives you? What are you going to do with this day? I want you to think about it. 
We have two choices. We can continue to walk in the light if we're in the light or we can remain in darkness. Let's make a choice. Third, the light that God gives, listen, the light gives light to us. So shining on those in darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, when you wake up in the morning, you know that feeling when the sun shines on you. You can feel its warmth, its brightness, sometimes blinding it is. That reflection of the light, the warmth on your body. What are you going to do with the light that is shining on you that reflects Christ? You see, God gives us light so that we can give light. Those smiles that I received this morning, that's light. Those hugs that you received this morning, that brings light, guys. When was the last time you walked into a room and the room lit up? Notice, it didn't just light up the room, guys. It lit up somebody's heart. You have a light and you have a responsibility to shine that light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. And let it shine as bright as it can be. The last part of the prophecy as I close today says the light will lead us to peace. The light will lead us to peace. The scripture says, then showing us the way one foot at a time down the path of peace. Peace. The Andreessen family lit the peace candle this morning. Jesus reminds us if anyone walks, oh, I love this scripture. If anyone walks in the day, he or she does not stumble because he or she sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he or she stumbles because, get this, the light is not in him or her. Are you getting this? This is not just a reflection. This is not just a light shining up on us and reflecting back. No, this is a light that is within us. Shining out. And if you walk in the day, it means that the light is really always shining in you, even at night. <laughs> You can't go home at night and say, well, that's it. You know, I don't have to live holy now. It's nighttime. <laughs> no, the light shines all the time because you're always day. Unless you choose to blow out that light. And therefore, night is within you. Notice that the night and day describes your inner being. You often can look in someone's eyes and it tells you what? Their soul. You can see the light when you look into someone's eyes, but you can also see when it's dimming. It says that the light in us will cause us not to stumble so that we can be on this path to peace. We need peace in our day. We need peace. Shalom is the Hebrew word that the New Testament writers used to define peace. Shalom meant more than the absence of confusion. It, it meant healthy. It meant whole. It meant a peace of mind. It meant an attitude of peace. What God wants us to have is a well-being that is all God. Loving God. And that peace starts with our communion with God. Just spending time with God. And as we spend time with God, eventually what happens is our communion with God flows over in our communion with one another. We begin to love ourselves more love each other more and so this Advent I ask you to allow the light of Christ allow the light of Christ to lead you to peace 
for the light has come. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much for peace. For you are the light that leads us to peace. As we prepare our hearts to receive the body and blood of Christ today, I ask that you touch each and every one of us and allow us to receive your grace so that thy light may shine. Amen. Please stand with me as I invite each and every person by faith to receive God's grace. This is God's grace that God has given to each and every one of us. Everyone is welcome to receive this grace. It's going to change your life. Because as we do what God says, God brings about a healing within us. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the eyes. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has is died. Lord. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and of these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive and us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. We're going to ask if our servants will come forward. The ushers are going to lead you. Our time together, I want it to be sacred for each and every one of us. As you come up, we'll be receiving by intention. And you can come and then pray, kneel and pray. We also have... Uh, the packages if you do not want uh, to come and uh, be served by intention and also we have gluten free as well.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. I pray you feel the presence of God here today. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. If you don't know that relationship with God that we're talking about or you want a deeper relationship with God, please, please let me know. I would love to be that light in your life. Text me, 832-773-4901. Let me know. You can come up today if you want. Let's just talk about it. God has something great in store for you. Amen. Please stand. Our hymn of invitation is hymn 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We will sing verses 1 and 6. so very much Haley miss your beautiful voice as well Jeffrey I don't know if you know how much did, always I look forward to the post Lou. keep praying for Don I miss Don not being here keep praying for his healing and at the same time I'm looking forward to hearing you Jeffrey let's see what God's going to do with you
Thank you. That's beautiful, Jeffrey. Thank you. Please stand today. I want you to think about as you go through your week this week, if you had this little indicator, you know, like a switch, with your light switch, you know, when we go in the house, some of you got this automatic. When you walk in, it just comes on. I want you to be aware today, and each day, is my light on. You think you can do that one? I just want you to think about it. Every time you're in a room, maybe, or you're in a conversation, ask yourself the question, is my light on? Is my light on? And then go from there. Our prayer partners, do we have any prayer partners here praying today? Okay. I got to get back to work. Children's church. Kids, kids' church. Kids' church right after this. I'll get back on schedule. I know they usually start at 10, right? 10, 10? Okay. So I'll get back on schedule. I'll cut my sermon back a little bit, maybe. It's just that excitement of coming back, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. It's just going to be a great time, guys. God has a lot in store for us. Amen? Amen. Go this week. Keep your light shining in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. So good to be back.